prostatitis is the most common urologic diagnosis in men under 50 and the third most common in men over 50. In fact, 5% of men between the ages of 20 to 50 suffer from prostatitis or have had it once. And 2 million visits occur annually in the United States for prostatitis. I'm Dr. Rena Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon, and today we're going to cover everything you need to know about prostatitis. We're going to talk about symptoms, the different types of prostatitis, the diagnosis, and the treatment. So if you like what you're learning here, make sure you subscribe and share this channel with your friends. So what are the symptoms? Well, symptoms most commonly include pain. And where can that pain be? Well, it can be in the lower part of your belly, in the penis itself, in the testicles, in the perineum, which is the area between the scrotum and the anus, or when you're urinating. Sometimes, if you have what we call acute prostatitis, this can be accompanied by other symptoms like fever, nausea, or vomiting. So it's a pretty uncomfortable and sometimes really serious condition. Actually, it's a little bit complicated because there's different types of prostatitis. So if someone tells me they have prostatitis, I have to figure out, is it because they have a bacterial infection? Is it because of inflammation? Or is it because of something else? So first we divide it into two halves. One is if there is any evidence of a bacterial infection, and that can be acute or chronic. If you have acute bacterial prostatitis, usually you can be very, very sick. You can have fevers, you can have chills, you can have nausea, you can have vomiting, and sometimes you can also have difficulty emptying your bladder. In addition to having difficulty urinating and occasionally pain with urination, sometimes people can feel symptoms like having to go very often, gotta go, gotta go, needing to go frequently and not being able to hold off going to the bathroom. The other type of bacterial prostatitis is when it's chronic. So sometimes you'll have these symptoms for a long period of time, but you won't be as sick. You won't necessarily have fevers or chills or nausea or vomiting, but you may have all the other symptoms I mentioned. Sometimes this can follow an acute episode. So if you had an episode where you got really, really sick and got treated but the symptoms never went away, it could become a chronic problem or it can be because of a history of diabetes, because of having a recent sort of procedure or surgery on the urinary tract, having issues with urination not emptying completely, or even just having a larger prostate than normal can sometimes put you at higher risk of getting chronic bacterial prostatitis. And so why do people get chronic infections? It's because these bacteria can get into the prostate, which is really difficult for antibiotics to penetrate and very difficult for your immune system to get rid of. The other kind of prostatitis, the other half of it is non-bacterial prostatitis. And this can be chronically due to inflammation or a non-inflammatory process. But again, symptoms can be very similar. If you fall into this category of a non-bacterial prostatitis and you've had symptoms for three of the last six months and these have been ruled out for any sort of infectious cause, you may have what's called chronic pelvic pain syndrome. This is essentially all the symptoms that I mentioned before and sometimes also symptoms of sexual dysfunction like premature ejaculation or erectile dysfunction. While this is sometimes called prostatitis, it's really unclear if this is caused by the prostate or other factors. So what causes prostatitis. A lot of the times it's due to bacterial infection. And one of the reasons people get bacterial infections is something we call intraprostatic ductal reflux. And essentially what that is, is instead of having urine flow forward out the P-tube or urethra, it actually refluxes or goes back into the prostate, causing potentially bacteria to then get into the prostate that way, and then causing the bacterial prostatitis we discussed before. And some things that can potentially put you at risk for this, as as we mentioned before, is prior surgery that maybe goes in the urethra. Having foreskin that doesn't retract can allow urine to get trapped and form kind of a high pressure system. And sometimes unprotected anal intercourse can also be a higher risk for getting prostatitis. And having a catheter or even a condom catheter can put you at higher risk for this ductal reflux. And lastly, if you have abnormal bladder function, either due to having an enlarged prostate where you're constantly trying to push urine out in a high pressure way and it's having difficulty emptying, or if you have a neurologic condition sometimes that makes this pressure in the bladder and urine flowing through the prostate more elevated, that can also put you at higher risk. Other potential causes might be issues with the immune system, issues with the pelvic floor musculature, which I've talked about many times as high tone pelvic floor musculature, which can cause difficulty in emptying your bladder and lots of issues with pain. 
and sometimes psychological factors as well. Another big one, as I've mentioned many times, is that procedures or surgeries around that area can put you at risk, but specifically prostate biopsy, which I've talked about before in previous videos, specifically recently I talked about in a Gray's Anatomy reaction video, and this in a very small subset of patients can lead to a prostatitis, which can make people very, very sick, which is why it's really important to take antibiotics before you get a prostate biopsy. So what happens when you come to the doctor? Well, first of all, we're gonna ask you a lot of questions. Where is the pain? When does it happen? How long have you had it? Have you ever had any sexually transmitted infections? What is your urination normally like? How often do you urinate? Do you have any symptoms of needing to go very often or having to rush to the bathroom? Do you wake up at night? Do you ever feel like you have to wait till your bladder empties? Does it stop and start? Do you have a weak stream? Or sometimes do you feel like you don't empty your bladder? And of course, we'll ask if you've had any recent procedures. One thing that is not very common in the United States but may be common in other countries is if you've had tuberculosis, this can also actually infect the prostate and and cause symptoms as well. Once we've gotten your history, we'll then do an examination, which includes a digital rectal exam. I've talked about this before in a reaction video to try guys, so make sure you check that out. However, if you are very, very ill and have a fever and chills, and we suspect very highly that you have acute bacterial prostatitis, we may skip that step or do it extremely gently because doing any sort of aggressive massage or pressing on that area can cause bacteria to then translocate or get into the bloodstream and cause you to get even more sick. We will also check a urinalysis and urine culture. So we may also check a post void residual with a bladder ultrasound to see how well you're emptying the bladder. And if you're having testicular pain, we may also order a scrotal ultrasound to make sure there's no masses or lesions in the testes. Other things, depending on your presentation, if you have a lot of abdominal pain or back pain, we may order some imaging of the abdomen as well as MRIs of the spine. So how do we diagnose prostatitis? Well, mostly it's from urinalysis and urine culture, but how do we get urine from the prostate specifically? So typically in the clinic, most often, most urologists will perform what's called a two glass test. And what that means is we'll have you urinate like you normally would into a cup and check that. We'll We'll also then do a prostate massage after which we'll then collect another urine sample and that will help us see if there's specifically bacteria or white cells or other signs of inflammation in the urine from the prostate versus from the bladder. So now let's get down to how we treat it. Of course for acute bacterial prostatitis we want to treat you with antibiotics. Typically if you are in the hospital you'll get intravenous antibiotics. If you're outpatient and you're not very sick we can treat you with oral antibiotics Antibiotics, and typically we'll tailor those to the urine culture. So when we get a urine culture, we get to see exactly what bacteria grows, as well as what antibiotics will be sensitive or will be able to treat that bacteria. And typically different from having a bladder infection or urinary tract infection, prostate infections need to be treated for a longer period of time, usually between four to six weeks, in order to make sure that the antibiotic actually penetrates through the prostate completely. And similarly, for chronic bacterial prostatitis, we'll also put you on a longer course of antibiotics. If, however, you don't improve on those antibiotics and your urine culture is negative, then giving you more antibiotics is not likely to help. And then we need to move on to these other things and consider a non-bacterial cause of the prostatitis. So number one treatment that's often offered is called alpha blocker medication. These are most commonly called tamsulosin or alphazosin, and these work by relaxing the prostate as well as relaxing the bladder neck. This helps reduce that high pressure urination we talked about earlier and hopefully helps alleviate some of these symptoms. In addition to this, we can sometimes use a short course of anti-inflammatory medications, like specifically non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, which commonly include ibuprofen or naproxen. Sometimes people can use things like steroids or immunosuppressive medications, although those are less commonly used. There's also some data to suggest that 5-alpha reductase inhibitors may help, and the way these work is by reducing the conversion of testosterone to intraprostatic D. DHT or dihydrotestosterone, and because of that, cause shrinkage of the prostate. 
One of the causes that sometimes may result in these symptoms is high tone pelvic floor dysfunction. And in these patients, pelvic floor physical therapy are going to a certified physical therapist to help teach you how to relax those muscles can be tremendously helpful. So what about prostate massage? I know a lot of you guys ask about this and previously this actually used to be the mainstay of treatment for prostatitis. It used to be that you'd go to your urologist and get a prostate massage for 10 minutes, three times a week. And the reason they thought this would work is because actually massaging the prostate would help drain some of those ducts that may be occluded, allow better penetration of antibiotics, and potentially improve circulation to the prostate. Initial studies showed this was beneficial, but more modern studies have not shown a benefit, so we no longer do this practice. And other therapies that have some little bit of data on them but are not widely used include posterior tibial nerve stimulation, which is actually a treatment for overactive bladder, where a small needle is placed in the ankle and stimulated to stimulate the tibial nerve, which travels up to the nerve roots that then stimulate the bladder. Other things that have also been looked at include acupuncture, which is similar, extracorporeal shockwave therapy, which I've talked about for erectile dysfunction, but they've looked at it using it on the parent and shown some mild benefits in patients with chronic prostatitis. And lastly, using some tricyclic antidepressants like nortriptyline or amitriptyline have been shown to have some benefit, as well as some bioflavonoids and pollen extracts have been looked at in very small studies as well. Overall, this is a challenging issue for a lot of people that can cause a lot of discomfort and a lot of stress. I hope this video was helpful to you. If it was, make sure you share it and comment below. Let me know what you thought. As always, remember to take care of yourself because you're worth it.